to get on the podium? You either got to hold shot this race or win this race. You want, you want to be on the podium? Yeah, you need to win P-Dub right now. I want to win P-Dub, but I also want to win the Yeah, okay. Well, if you can do both, that'd be great. Yeah, I think you can do that. Okay. Where do you want to go? Right here? Yeah? All right. Caden Cedric getting a little stylish. He was the Stasic hole shot winner here, but is the number eight, Regan Heighton, given chase in this 51cc, four to six shaft drive limited. Come on, Regan! You need him! You gotta beat him! <laughs> That's his, the only one! Go on, Regs! Couldn't care, oh yeah, I couldn't care less if there's a career or not. I'm not looking to invest money in them racing motocross. Yeah. We do it to spend money and that's about it. <laughs> I know I know right now it's one way, nothing's coming back the other way. I'm not, I've got no, no illusions about that. Leading around the number eight, Reagan Hayden, as they stand overall, Caden Sedgwick with 4-1-1 moto scores won the overall, Reagan Hayden with 1-5-2 sitting second overall. All right, here we go. Down the backstretch, Caden Sedgwick piloting that 43 Yamaha. Reagan, oh no, he stalled it. Reagan Hyden with a last minute pass coming up for the checkers. It's gonna be moto winner Reagan Hyden. Yeah. Oh. Winning the overall, that third moto gives Reagan that tiebreaker. Reagan Hyden. Moto winner and overall class champion in the 51cc 4 to 6 shaft oh, drive. Oh, you little girl. Hey, go shake his hand. Where'd he go? Go. Can you spray it? Try and spray it. Go shake it. There you go. Shake it out. Go shake it. Go shake it. Like that. There you go. There we go. Hey. Good job, Reagan. Drink it! Let him get pictures of drinks in the champagne! Yeah! I just tell him just enjoy the adventure and don't put so much stress on, on what you think the end goal is because it, it's probably not going to happen. There's very few. Uh, so just enjoy the adventure and make sure you, you have a, a strong relationship with your child. And um, that's more important than any, any sport, of course. And, you know, relationships are more important to me than any kind of sport. And that, you know, I, I would hope that everybody would understand that. I would say I kind of have a, a term for it. I call it my gnarly factor. So I'll, I'll, I'll say if, you know, where they rank on my gnarly factor. I could almost say with almost the majority of the kids that I've ever signed, I could pinpoint watching them ride and seeing a race along the way or something that they did. And I was like, there it is. Like that's something that I saw that triggered for me, like they, they have something a little different uh, and they're unique. Well, it's just, I think parents obviously want what's best for their kid, right? But I think not having the perspective of like, oh, that kid has this and my kid doesn't, 
and then there's this false sense of like, well, if my kid had that, then he would do this. That really doesn't, it, it takes more focus. There's more focus on that than needs to be, really. It's just, if, you're, if your kid's riding properly and the, you have the fundamentals dialed and your bike's 10%, close, ten, if within 10% of what the kid that you're gonna be racing, you, your bike's fine. On the scale of like how many kids that could have uh, won that championship without it every time you catch them, let's say it's a cheater motor or cut the course, and uh, what do you think on that? Like, you know, you're saying they didn't need it. They could have just won that championship probably on a regular bike. They were a good rider, but yet now it's a, a tarnish on their career or their life for years. Well, I've always gone with, uh, when I was taking golf lessons one time, I was, uh, I had a horrible slice because I'm fat and I can't swing right. And uh, I told my golf instructor that I needed a new driver. And he looked at me and he said, son, it ain't the arrow, it's the Indian. Now I know that's not politically correct, but so many times it's the kid that's riding the bike that's turning the throttle that's, that's winning. It ain't the motor combination or, or the way they've found to circumvent a rule that we have or anything like that. It's, it's the kid that's riding it. It's his desire to win, and and uh, it was his day. You know, especially when they're little, it's it's the kids. You know, it's all about the kids, and uh, and doing anything other than just running it the way it ought to be is just uh, we have a hard time understanding why they do that sometimes. The track is super technical, it's more of a hard base, um, and you've got to be a lot more patient in that kind of stuff. Racing this track really teaches you how to be patient and really look ahead and uh, be really creative with things and just try to think of lines that nobody else is taking because that's where the smooth spots are. Just how big and rough the track is, I mean, they really in California don't get to ride anything this big and rough, I'll be honest. I mean, we ride Parler's main track, but it's not the same. And then, uh, you know, just get in a race against the fastest kids. You, uh, you get to see the level that they're at. Hearing the comments from some of the riders, like the reason that they come here, you have the fast ones to come here and they're not here for the nightly activities. They're here to ride this as a motocross track. And this is a motocross track. There's ruts, there's bumps, and it's serious. And that's something that's great. So we're able to cater to all levels. You're catering to these fast ones that are only here worried about championships and getting experience and becoming better. And then you have the other, which is the bulk and really the ones that are coming here as a vacation. This is a vacation for them to come and have fun. And they're bringing their families, they're bringing their friends, and that's, that's something why we have nightly activities. That's why we have these great moments that we're trying to share. And I just tell him caffeine and nicotine, and he knows he knows what I need, man. I'll probably sleep for a good 20 hours once this is all over, man. Right, so not many people really know the extent of pulling off a race this size, and from all the little details of printing all the banners, making sure every sponsor's taken care of, all the cactuses, all the awards, all the radios and headphones and employees, there's over 70 employees just for this week at Arizona Open. We want when you come to this park and you step foot on it and you come here for the AZ Open that it's a cherished event, not just from the racing, but just from the nightly activities to just everything, the live stream, the videos, the content we put out. It's a, it's a full circle of like, if you're coming to our race and you're giving us whatever X amount of money that we're showing that we're actually giving it back. I don't want to be that promoter that you're giving them money and they're just doing a race, you know, and, and then they're just leaving and it's done. Dude, it's a non-stop job from before they get here, having a content team, having a live stream team, having a team that gets the races going, having the reps and making for sure this whole entire facility is running, this event's running, and we make for sure that when you come here, you actually see the dollars going back in.
It's uh, 3.05, Sunday, December 6, 2020, and we've already started planning 2021 for the AZ Open.